Hey, today on the Weekend Handyman, we're going to talk about rocket cars. Uh, there's something kind of fun you could do on the weekend. Uh, it's just a weekend project, something simple, something fun you could do with your friends. Um, a lot of times you'll see people put them up online and they just go all over the place. Or you'll see um, the robot games or something like that, and they'll be on a tether. Uh, me and my buddies, we just get together and kind of do it for fun. But we've been doing it for a long time, and this is kind of what I've ended up with. Um, this vehicle runs on an A10 engine from ESTS. It's the small ones, so it's inside with the tiny ones, really small. They pack a bit punch, though. Um, there's two ways you can kind of go about it. You can take a die cast car and basically drill a hole in the back and stick an engine in it. Uh, for that, you use like a B6 or a C6, and generally they'll go pretty straight if you build it right. Um, but they usually kind of go all over the place and crash and it can be fun. But if you want to build something really fast, um, something kind of from scratch, it's a little bit more difficult to do. So I'm going to go over a few of the basic principles. Uh, this was built using old RC car parts. Um, this is a RC car body. It's from RC 18T. It's a 118 scale. Uh, you could use like a um, plastic metal car body or something light. Generally, if you can use an A10 engine, uh, you want to build a very lightweight vehicle and you need to really take a few things into consideration when you do that. Uh, the lightweight vehicles are generally a lot more finicky than a die cast car would be, but uh, they run on a very short distance and they go very fast in that time and if they do crash, generally they don't break because they're so lightweight and if they hit something or somebody they're not going to hurt them. Uh, so one of the first things you need to consider is the engine placement. As you can see, mid-mounted engine. Uh, it's in front of the rear axle so that the vehicle doesn't spin out. Also, um, the angle of the engine, you either want it to be flat or a slight downward facing angle. That way it presses the car into the ground. Um, if the en engine's up like this, it's going to pick the rear end up and you don't want that. Uh, and this vehicle, I don't know if you can see in there, the engine mount looks a little bit complex. That's because it's adjustable. I can adjust the angle so I could put the engine almost flat or I can uh, kick it up at more of an angle depending on how the vehicle's running. Um, but basically mounting the engine further forward does a trick. To mount the engine you can use um, an engine tube from a model rocket and kind of glue it into something but I used a piece of aluminum that I molded around it in a vise and it's just bolted to my mount there and it works well. Um, another thing to consider is the uh, placement of your wheels. Um, Generally you want the rear wheel to be closer, a little bit closer to the engine and you want to position your front wheels as far forward as you can. Um, originally this vehicle had the rear axle very far back and it was because I thought it was better to have the engine extremely far into the vehicle but the problem was so much of the vehicle was in the front of the engine that the rear wheels didn't have enough weight over them. So even though the engine is very close to the rear axles it's there's a lot of weight over the rear axle. It's kind of hard to explain this, but it's what works for me. Um, uh, when it comes to the wheels also, on a lightweight vehicle, you're going to want as much traction in the rear as you can with as little in the front. I use foam tires from slot cars, and they come mounted on the uh, wheel, and then you just slide them onto the axle, which you can get off of a hobby website, and they're onto the axle with a set screw and I just use a piece of aluminum folded over the axle to uh, hold it. That works well. Um, like I said, there's a lot of traction in the rear end so if I grab the engine, it's a very simple test, just grab the engine and you move it. You'll see my front end moves back and forth while the rear end barely moves. Uh, this is because the front wheels are aluminum and the rear wheels are foam so when the engine fires, um, a lot of times you'll see the cars kind of take off one direction, this will track straight because uh, the rear, the engine's force is being directed forward and it can't, doesn't have enough power to let the rear end slip out and since the front end slides around rather than grabbing it doesn't create a pivot point for the engine to work off of so like if I put my finger in front of the rear, I mean in front of the front tire here you can see as I push the engine now the rear end can slide but since there's no traction on the front it allows the vehicle to track straighter. Um, also, another thing to do is put in adjustable steering. Once again, I use RC car parts. You don't have to. 
This is a turnbuckle from RC car. As you turn it, I can I turn it one way, the axles will slide to the left. If I turn it the other way, it'll come back this way. So by placing an adjustable, adjustable steering on the vehicle, it allows me to guide the trajectory of the car. Um, like I said, it only guides it because the wheels are aluminum. Um, so if they were like the rear tire to foam, it'd be a lot more finicky and a lot harder to dial in. Uh, the front wheels I did make myself, um, they're basically these rear wheels, except they were all aluminum, and I cut the foam down and basically cut the, trimmed the whole entire rim down until I got this. And I did that by mounting a piece of 1 8 axle in my Dremel, which is coincidentally the size of the the bit here. It takes a 1 8 rod. So I just put the 1 8 rod in and put the wheel on there and just ground it down like that. Um, and one of the other things you need to consider too is aerodynamics. It's not that important. But um, as you can see, I have a big air dam on the front of the car, so as the air hits this front of the vehicle, there's a higher area of pressure there, and it's just pressing down on this to keep the vehicle from lifting up. Um, my friend has a vehicle very similar to this. He doesn't have this on, and in one of his runs, his vehicle actually lifted up off the ground and took off. Um, another thing I did was I put a little winglet here. Uh, it doesn't seem like it do much, but these things do go like 40, 50 miles an hour. Um, so at that speed it will do something and when I was reviewing tapes of my last few runs the vehicle hopped to the side. It still continued going straight but it literally just hopped. I don't know how or why it did it but it did it. So I put this on there to prevent that. Um, that way I don't have any crashes or anything. So aerodynamics aren't too important but you want to think about how to keep the vehicle on the ground because uh, you don't have a tether to do that. Um, and one of the final things to consider is weight. Um, as you can see, I trimmed basically everything away. There's holes everywhere. Um, I used carbon fiber pieces everywhere. It's pretty cheap uh, if you're using it in small amounts, but once you stay, if I made the whole chassis out of carbon fiber, it would have cost me a fortune. But uh, all the hardware I used is aluminum. Uh, I got that from uh, Tower Hobbies. So all the screws are aluminum. Um, it saves quite a bit of weight when the whole vehicle is held to die with screws. There's no glue on this vehicle whatsoever, so when it crashes and parts break or whatever, I can service it. Um, this is a, a titanium turnbuckle. You can get them steel. They're kind of expensive in titanium, but it's a lot lighter than steel would be. Uh, one of the other things I did was both my front and rear axles were made out of steel, and uh, they actually weighed quite a bit. So I went on eBay and looked for 1 8 titanium rod, and I found some for like 5 bucks, and it was like almost a foot of it. So I now have titanium axles, so I'm going to save weight there. Another thing you can do to save weight if you have a lot of screws on your vehicle is just trim the ends of the screws down. As you can see, there's really no screws that are sticking out anywhere. It's all trimmed down. It doesn't save much weight, but when you're using such a small engine and the vehicle doesn't weigh much anyways, cutting weight everywhere is a good way to increase your speed. And you can always add weight back. I have a set of weights that I keep with me when I run the car, and if the car is running well, then I don't add weight, and if it needs to add weight, I add weight to it. Uh, you can always add weight, but you can't take away weight. So, so a few things to consider. Um, if you're running a die-cast car, you really don't need to worry too much about the weight. The vehicle weighs a lot anyways. I mean, this is an old piece of one of my rocket cars, and this thing weighs at least three or four times as much as this whole truck does. Um, you could certainly try to cut weight away from a die-cast car, but it's difficult. Uh, basically, if you have steel parts, try to make them out of another material, like aluminum or Lexan sheet or carbon fiber. If you have steel screws all throughout your vehicle and you have a lot of them, switch to aluminum. Um, cutting weight is the best way to increase the speed of your vehicle. And the whole fun of this really is to get the vehicle to go fast and in a straight line at the same time, for me at least. Um, you know, putting them on a string and shooting them in a straight line, that's all the well easy. You'll see people take a model rocket, put wheels on it, and put on a string, and they'll shoot it off and be like, oh, I made a rocket car. But, you know, it's a lot more involved to make one that doesn't run on a tether, that goes fast, and in a straight line. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Like I said, if you run the die-cast cars, use a B or a C engine, or a D if you want. Uh, to see a crash and burn, it's a good time, and watch them get damaged. Or you can take a swing at building one from scratch, and making it lightweight, and run in a straight line. So. That's basically it. Um, 
obviously with this I tried to keep it looking like a car you know has a defined engine compartment defined passenger compartment obviously it's cut down a lot but it looks similar to a vehicle so that's about it if you have any questions post in the comments below uh, so hope you enjoy it hope you take a stab at making your own rocket car it can be a lot of fun I uh, hope I gave you some ideas and some pointers in the right direction to make a successful one uh, Give it a shot and I'll throw some clips in of them running together at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Another incredible run.